All right, here we're looking at some unstable isotopes, and we're going to try to predict how they're going to break down. This is not an exact science. We're just looking at the most likely method. So this first one, radium-224, has 88 protons and 136 neutrons. So any atom has more than 82 protons is unstable. It doesn't matter how many neutrons you have, you can't get it to be stable. And most of these really large atoms are going to break down through alpha decay. Not all of them, but a lot of them will. So we're going to write out this reaction. So this is radium RA. It's got a mass number of 88. And it's, uh, it's not mass number, atomic number of 88, mass number of 224. So we're going to say it's going to give off an alpha particle, which has a mass of 4 over 2. And then we can figure out the rest, 220, 86, which will be radon. And so that's the most likely method it's going to break down. Now, not every atom that is over 82 breaks down through alpha decay. Some do beta. And that's really hard to predict. But we're going to assume most of the ones over 82 will do alpha decay. All right, here's nitrogen 12. So nitrogen 12 has 7 protons and 5 neutrons. So for atoms that have a mass number of 40 or less, or like around 20 protons or fewer, they typically want around the 1 to 1 proton to neutron ratio. Again, typically. So looking at this, there appear to be more protons and neutrons. This is probably going to stabilize by turning one of them into the other. In this case, we want to turn a proton into a neutron. So there are two ways to turn a proton and neutron or a neutron into a proton. So if you're positive, there are two ways to become neutral. One is you can add a negative charge. If you add a negative charge to a positive, you'll become neutral. The other is if you're positive, you can um, get rid of that positive charge and you'll be neutral. So if you eject that positive charge, you'll be neutral. So that was kind of a bad drawing, but you kind of get the idea. So what we can do here is here's our nitrogen with the mass of 12. And so the first gonna option we're going to say is, okay, it's positive. We want to turn a positive to a neutral. So we're going to allow this to capture an electron. So when you capture an electron, 12 plus 0 is 12. 7 plus negative 1 is 6. We turn uh, nitrogen 12 into carbon 12. And carbon 12 has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. So we solve the problem by capturing an electron. We essentially turned one of these protons into a neutron. But that is not the only way uh, to do this. So the other way we can do it, instead of capturing an electron, or rather absorbing an electron, we can emit that positive charge. And the way we're going to do that is, again, 7, 12. We're gonna, we only want to get rid of the charge. We don't want to get rid of the mass. So we're going to emit what's called a positron, which is a positively charged electron. And so this will also produce carbon-12, and the numbers add up. So you either absorb a negative charge or you emit the positive charge. End result, you still get the six protons, six neutrons. So either electron capture or positron emission will solve this problem. All right, this next one, oxygen-19, oxygen has eight protons, and if it's got a mass of 19, it has 11 neutrons. So we have too many neutrons here. We would like to turn one of them into a proton. Now, how do you make something neutral positive? You can either absorb something that's positive or release something that's negative. Now, oxygen can't just absorb something that's positive because if it did, it would have to be a positron. And absorbing a positron is not really feasible. One, there just aren't many positrons hanging around. It's antimatter. It gets destroyed pretty easily. Plus, absorbing something positive like a positron is going to be tough for a nucleus to do. The nucleus is positive. It's going to repel it. So the only realistic option is to not absorb something positive, but to release something negative. And that would be an electron, or sometimes you can write it as a beta particle. So if we release an electron, then negative 1 plus 9 is 8, 19 up top, and 9 is fluorine. And fluorine has 9 protons here, 10 neutrons. So that has helped fix the problem. The balance, 8 protons to 11 neutrons, is now 9 protons to 10 neutrons. It's better. You're not going to always get it one-to-one -one exactly. So anyway, that's the process, the main types of ways that radioactive isotopes are going to break down. So um, best thing to do is just analyze what the issue is and ask yourself, how am I going to fix that? And so one of these methods is generally going to do the job. There are other types of radiation too, but 
these are the major ones that we're going to uh, concern ourselves with. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.